turn now to the Bank of Canada because uh, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem is speaking before the House of Commons Finance Committee this afternoon along with Senior Deputy Governor Carolyn Rogers. This comes after the central bank held rates steady at 5% last week. For more, we're joined by Avery Shenfeld. He's Managing Director and Chief Economist with CIBC Capital Markets. Avery, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. You're welcome. So we do have the opening remarks that have been published um, by the governor of the Bank of Canada. However, the, he hasn't actually started speaking yet. So there will be more to come because he'll get a lot of questions following these remarks. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts on, on what we know uh, that he's saying so far. So uh, he, he did put out there that he thinks that there is more relief in the pipeline um, when it comes to inflation. And I, I do think that's interesting because he, in the uh, up Updated monetary policy report last week, we saw them push out uh, the inflation sort of targets or expectations for inflation a little bit further in terms of how high it was going to stay in the near term, still hoping to get to that 2% target at the same time. Um, but where do you see potential relief coming from on the inflation front when the Bank of Canada is also saying that, you know, risks to inflation have increased? It's really a case of bad news is good news in the sense that they're forecasting very tepid economic growth ahead. And that's not a heroic forecast at this point because it's what we're already seeing. And economists are pretty good at observing what's already happening. Uh, so the economy has responded to, low in to high interest rates. The interest sensitive segments of the economy have slowed. And we're really counting on basic economic theory that a slow enough economy will reduce demand pressures, push up the unemployment rate a bit, lower wages, wage inflation as a result, and end up with lower inflation down the road. And the key sentence in their monetary policy report, which is really reflected in the tone of this opening statement, is that you get the slowdown first, you get the lower inflation somewhat later. So we're in, we're in the first part is already now well established that the economy is slow to a crawl. We just have to be very patient to see that show up in lower price inflation. I should note that Macklem has started speaking now. We'll show that a little bit as we go here. But we know what he's saying in, in terms of these opening remarks. So we'll just keep going through those. Um, when it comes to the uh, increased risks to inflation, though, I mean, you're talking about the economy slowing in the near term and then the relief to inflation being later. So what are some of the, the increased risks that we're seeing? Well, they talked about energy prices. Those spiked when the war in the Middle East started. They've come back down a little bit, but there's obviously a risk that should that war become a wider one that ropes in some of the oil producing countries, you know, think of Iran, for example, that we would get a more material spike in gasoline prices. And, and at least initially, that's going to raise inflation. It's, it's one of the components in the CPI. It's really nothing the Bank of Canada can do about that other than let that ride out and let other prices start to come down as the economy slows. So that's certainly one of the risks. Then there's also a long segment about housing here and the real problem that, you mm -hmm. know, we've got a lot of people trying to buy a rent and not that many apartments or houses available. We can't really cure that that quickly either. Yeah, and that's not something that the Bank of Canada has a control over either, right, in terms of the supply side of things. They don't really. However, they do control the overall pace of the economy and therefore job creation and ultimately spending power. So if Canadians are continuing, for example, to face higher rents over the next couple of years, um, but their incomes aren't growing as quickly because the labour market isn't as strong, something else will have to give way. Maybe it'll be discounted airline tickets or hotel rates or something else where prices will ease off because more of our money is going to rents or mortgage payments, leaving less available for everything else. Right now, the labor market is tight enough that people are getting some pretty big wage increases. So that's letting them pay for higher rent and still have money when they go to the store. Um, but, you know, the Bank of Canada is determined to see this slowdown continue in the economy and thereby slow that spending power overall. When, when it comes to housing supply, though, uh, higher interest rates, would it not limit what's uh, able to be done on the supply side of things because borrowing is required, you know, to, to get homes built? Absolutely. And we hear that, you know, when we talk to developers of apartment buildings, for example, they're saying, well, 
today's financing costs, even with the GST rebate, some of them are unenthusiastic about starting up new projects. So the problem is the weapon we're using to fight inflation, which is high interest rates, has a negative side effect like many doses of medicine do. And in this case, they're slowing home building and therefore maybe lengthening the time frame to get all these additional units built. We might need to do something temporarily on the flow of immigrants or students and so on to actually ease off demand. And I suspect that the questions in this uh, hearing that the best collective agreement the in other the things governments could do in addition to just simply having high interest rates to get rid of some of these uh, inflation hotspots. Yeah, it will be interesting to hear what he's asked about. Um, I, I wonder when it comes to the data that we're expecting out this week, Avery, we've got GDP data out tomorrow, uh, job market data out on Friday. What do you think we're going to see? Nothing great. <laughs> GDP is in a crawl. You can get a little bit of economic growth here or there, but nothing spectacular. And one would suspect, although you can't be too certain, that that will show up in fairly muted hiring. We've gotten used to, though, the fact that with the population growth we're seeing, even if we were to gain, say, 20,000 jobs, which historically would have been a good number, that might underwhelm population growth and mean that the unemployment rate edges up. And really, the Bank of Canada, although they don't like to talk about this too much, when they say that the labor market is tight and therefore a driver of inflation, what they're really hoping for is a gradual rise in the unemployment rate and perhaps some reduction in job vacancies, and we have been seeing that, to put some downward pressure on the kind of wage inflation that we're seeing right now. Yeah, the 